41 past the hour, the migrant crisis overseas has reached tragic new levels this week. And as NBC's Kelly Cobiello reports, there is no signs it will let up anytime soon. We want to warn viewers that some of these images may be upsetting. It's been days. Desperate families stranded outside a train station in Budapest. No answers, no help, nowhere to go. Imagine yourself in our place. You are a human. We are a human. You have kids. We have kids. Hundreds are stuck here. The Hungarian government refusing to let them board trains out of the country. Shireen Mamo walked here with her children. Her brother made it to Germany. She's now alone, feeling helpless and hopeless. Europe is a continent in crisis. A warning, this disturbing image shows how bad it has become. The body of one small boy cradled in a Turkish police officer's arms. He was from Kobani in Syria. His boat sank on the way to Greece. And there has been mass confusion in Hungary just this morning. Migrants are reportedly finally being allowed on trains again, but not being allowed to leave the country. Chaos. Joining us now, contributing writer for the New York Times Magazine, Scott Anderson. He recently spent time aboard a rescue ship off the coast of Libya, and his experience is the basis for a photo essay which appears as the magazine's new cover story. MSNBC contributor Dorian Warren joins us as well. You know, Scott. You saw some incredible things. Yeah, you did. And, you know, we, um, we always talk about World War II, and uh, the part of World War II we pass over is what happened in Europe afterwards, where, what, over a million, yep. uh, a million people displaced. This is not to that level, but this has to be the greatest migrant crisis since 1945, 1946. That's right, and it's, and it's rapidly headed towards um, those sorts of numbers. Already this year, uh, I think a third of a million people have, have come into Europe. Uh, predictions are that you have another couple of months uh, while the Mediterranean is, is quite calm. It's, it'll taper off then. Right. But everyone's predicting it's going to be even worse next year. And what you, what you have seen and what you've described, bodies stacked on top of each other yeah. in, in the, the whole of ships, uh, everybody on board not knowing how to swim, and when they fall into the river, they just sink straight down into the river. That's right. It's, um, yeah, I, I think a lot of us have this idea if somebody is in the know how to swim that they thrash around for you know, a minute or two and in fact you probably have about five seconds to get that person a, a life preserver some some sort of flotation device and if not they just go straight down so uh, in your reporting um, what do you think the story is that most people here don't really understand about this crisis well, seeing it firsthand I, I, just the, the incredible numbers of people coming out um, and and also the 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 real barbarism that, that is that the smugglers are the way they're operating this whole thing. This is the closest we have uh, to to a modern day slave trade. These people are being charged fifteen hundred dollars, which uh, for most most countries that's life savings of not just them but their extended family. They don't family. have it. They don't have it. Don't have um, it. And they're being crammed onto these boats without any protection um, and uh, you know just taking their lives in their hands. And what was most shocking to me, if if people see the picture of these boats, there's 370 people on each one of these boats. If you look at it, it, they, it, it looks like you know, maybe it can fit 150, 170. Um, and what was amazing to me as the, the migrants were being rescued off the, off the boat was there's another whole layer of people underneath down in the hole, probably mm. another 100 people literally being stacked on top of one another uh, down in the hold. And it, it's down in the hold where the, the dying usually begins. And, and uh, it, it usually takes about eight to 10 hours after they set off from Libya when people start dying. Scott, when we think about migration, we, we often think about it in terms of push and pull factors. What are the push factors as to why people leave? And then why are they pulled to certain places? Can you unpack what are some of those push factors from yeah. Syria, from Libya, from East Africa, from Bangladesh? What are yeah. they? Uh, it's war and poverty uh, and, and repressive regimes. So in, in different parts of the world, it's it, certainly in Syria or Iraq, it's, it's largely people fleeing the wars. In, in Syria, you have a lot of men coming out now who, as this Syrian army completed in manpower, they're worried about being called up to serve in, in the military, or they're, or they're fleeing the encroachment of al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, or, or ISIS. Uh, what you're seeing from West Africa is, is economic devastation, just um, you know, what, you know, what you see everywhere around the world in people fleeing poor countries to wealthier ones. 
Uh, most of the people on the on the on the boats that, that uh, I saw being rescued, they were from Eritrea, and that's a, a, a just an extremely repressive, despotic regime. So it's a range from different countries. It's a range of issues. And the poll, uh, the Europeans are having to re-examine their immigration. That's right. System that is all too inviting. Yeah. To uh, to people who are ill-equipped right. to make the journey. That's right. And and what you're seeing now is. I'm I'm sorry. I really I should pose that as a question. <laughs> I, no, I'm serious. I mean, that's all I've read. Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious. So you've been there. Why don't Why don't you tell us some of the factors? Well, yeah. I, I I mean, obviously, you know, the, the, between the the wars and the and the economic devastation that you're seeing in Sub-Saharan Africa in in South Asia. Um, in the Middle East, it, it, Europe is the beacon uh, in, in a way that, you know, in earlier generations and, and for other places of the world, the United States is. Um, but but I, I think what is really, what's really driving this, this whole force is just a complete complete desperation. I mean, the idea that these people but, are... But, but why now? This, the desperation has been building, certainly in the Middle East, but all across the world. Why now? Why this summer? It's a good question. I don't... The, you, what you've seen is a steady... starting out as a trickle a decade ago, and almost every year the numbers have gone up. Uh, certainly what you're seeing in Syria now, and I think Syria is going to become worse uh, next year, um, is, is a much larger numbers coming out. Um, but you've always seen this coming out of uh, out of sub-saharan africa but again all our numbers i'm not, i can't i don't really know why you can pinpoint yeah mike so we have a horrific photo on the cover of the new york times a turkish police officer carrying a two-year-old boy drowned dead that will galvanize people until about 10 a.m this morning uh should we just shut down the united nations for incompetence I, you know mike i can't believe you said that I, I i look at what's happening in the middle east and as i was looking at these pictures i was asking myself where the hell why do we have is the united, united nations? nations where the hell are any of these international organizations no. isn't this well, you, ha you have, why it was you, have you have you have doctors without borders right you have the international red cross trying desperately to deal with the situation but there's no unifying government body it seems capable or willing to inject itself into this horrific historical tale that's right and, and doctors without borders which is a fantastic organization they they personally have rescued close to 12,000 migrants just uh, just wow. since May uh, in the Mediterranean. Um, I, I think also even not even talking about the, U uh, the, the UN, talk about the EU, this is all falling re very much disproportionately on really on three countries. On Germany, the, that's, the, that's the country that almost all the migrants are trying to reach, uh, but it's the points of entry, uh, Italy and Greece, and they are just being absolutely overwhelmed with numbers. And you know, the, the, the migrants were coming in through Greece, they go through the Balkans, the, they're, all the migrants are terrified of Hungary in particular, but they have to go through Syria, uh, Serbia, I mean. Um, they're just being shunted on. They're, they're being you know, funneled up to Northern Europe and primarily to Germany and then the Nordic countries. And once they get into any of the 28 countries, they're free to move? anywhere they want yes by law uh, yes it's, it, but it's complicated because in a lot of the countries and again especially the Balkan countries they just funnel them through they're clearly not welcome there there have been all kinds of physical attacks on the migrants oh. I don't think anyone stays in Hungary uh, any of the migrants in particular uh, by choice they're all trying to, to right. move further on all right we'll be looking for the cover story in the New York Times magazine thank you so much